Okay, as you can see, um, and I mentioned before, we're fitting the new type seal now, and the new type seal does not seal on this housing here. So uh, there's just no way it can physically go on. So the new seal has the, it's a cassette type seal, it's a one piece, all sealed up, no need to pull that apart at all. But if you have a look here, where the old type seal was, there's a wear sleeve. And the wear sleeve is a replaceable part, so you can take this off and put a new one on. But with the new type seal, you don't need to. So before you go smack it into the thing here, thinking it's one there, just check. There's a lip there, a definite lip there, and a lip down the back. And what I do to get rid of that is grab a coal chisel and just expand it. So I've expanded it in one place there. Now I'll do the same up here. Don't go right through. And that will probably, oh well look, it'll come off by hand. So that's your wear sleeve. Check that you have one. Um, if it's had a later type seal in, that won't be there. So you'll have to do something else. But I'll use a CRC brake cleaner on here, tidy all this up. And I have a little bit of sandpaper here. So I'll just. And all I'm looking to do is make sure there's no burrs, no dirt, no rubbish on this surface here. And that this leading edge here is nice and clean. And there we go. So this seal now would go on to there. You can see how with a bit of force that will go on. Um, this isn't the seal we're using. This is just the one, the other new one I had as a spare. Now, so so that sits on there okay. Um, I often just like to put a just a little grease to help it on. And that's just to help it slide into place. Now, inside the seal, actually I should try and show you, inside the seal there's a few little ridges there, all those ridges seal, and when this goes up on there, it's just a positive rubber seal, so we don't have to worry about it. And I'll get the housing now, and here's our housing that we've put the bearing in already. So we'll bring that on. I'm trying to support this and stay out of the road of the camera, which will be a feat on its own. So I just have to introduce this bearing up over that housing. So that should stay there now, so
I probably probably should have put a bit of oil on here, shouldn't I really? Okay, so that's that bearing started. We're not quite onto the seal part yet. We're probably an inch away. So this next bearing is the next one to go on. We're not up to where that will take up just yet. So if I bring my knee in under here, try and hold it square. I think I'll just bump him on a little further yet. There we go. So that's on as far as it can go. Now this bearing here, he needs to just go on gently. I'll try and support it. And you can see that piece I just pushed in, that was the seal going up over the housing. So... I'll try and support it so it's not touching the bearing. Okay, so now we need to get the ring gear and put the ring gear on and put the bolts in and tension those up. Okay, so here's our ring gear. I'll just give him another I've washed it in the Kero washer, in the parts washer, but it'd be just good to give it another little bit of a tidy up. Now we had three dowels still in it, so those three dowels can line up there. Now I've made another mistake and my mistake is that I put that on too soon so I need to pull that out a little bit put this on a little bit And we'll get a couple of bolts started. Okay. Now these are 15 millimeter socket you will need for this. We'll just tighten these up. So I'm going across, like straight across, then pick 90. Now we only really need to work on four to pull this in snug. That's just going nice and freely at the moment, so that's good.
Now, this is pushing on those bearings and setting the preload for in here. So what we need to do is before we go real tight, give it a turn. And we're giving it a turn and there's a, that's giving it a chance for all the needle rollers on the tapered roller bearings to line up nicely. There's no oil on them yet. Oh, well, not much oil anyway. So we'll... And you can feel that's just gone firm now. So we'll do all the others up the same. I don't have a book on this, but I have a feeling that these were torqued to 70 foot-pounds. So, I'll get the tension wrench and torque them up, but before I do, let's put this back on before we forget, seeing as I stuffed that up. I'm just getting a bit ahead of myself. So we'll put this back on. That can go right in there. We'll give it another turn. That's feeling good. Okay, let's go and tension him up. Come back here. Around ninety eight Newton meters. Then we're going from one side to the other, and then at ninety, then across the other side. Then up to probably 10 o'clock. Then 180. Then 90. Then 180 again. And because we're pulling the bearings in as we go, making sure we have the correct tension on them, just keep giving it a little bit of a turn. And that way you know everything's fine. Um, because we started here and we've gone all the way around, we actually need to go around again and just check. So that's, that's okay. Okay, that will do. Now there's an O-ring here. Now this O-ring, this actually seals the hub, seals the um, yeah, planetary gears, the housing, onto the hub there so the oil doesn't come out. So we'll just give that a bit of a wipe around. Pop up and get the O-ring.
And the O-ring for this is Sparex S7 triple S triple seven three. So we put the O-ring in the groove there. That's good. Make sure around the housing here is nice and clean for the new, or well, for the old piece to go on. We'll go and grab that. Okay, we have the hub here. Now, what we must remember to do now is get some grease and that little thrust washer. We have to grease that thrust washer. And the reason we're greasing the thrust washer is so it can go down in the centre there so it's in the centre and it can't go anywhere there's a little bit of paint chip there okay so now we have to get all this lined up so we have the holes that bolt it all together here so we need to try and keep them in line and often these don't just line up, <laughs> it's just, it's a bit of a fiddle. So if we support it about in the middle where we reckon it is, There we go. So check our holes are lined up here. Yes, they are. Now these little little screws that hold it all together, just a dab of grease on them. Dab of grease on here. Now these don't have to be tight tight, they just need to be there so when you pull the wheel off the whole thing doesn't fall off. So we'll just take them up evenly. And the only tension there at the moment is pulling them up over onto the O-ring. So that's snug up. That's snugged up. So let's take him back one flat. That's snug up. Let's take him back one flat. So... We know it's not over tight. Next time we want to get these off, we can. So at this stage, we can get this oil level mark here. We'll get it exactly true. So, and we're looking for three o'clock, nine o'clock for that. And the oil level is to the bottom of the plug here. So once oil starts coming out the plug there, we know we have the correct oil level. Now. You can, I know people that have put it up here and thought, oh, we'll put a bit of extra oil in there. That'll do it the world of good. It doesn't. It hasn't got enough room for the air gap. That seal will leak in a flash. So you are better off probably going a tad less than a tad more. So that's nine o'clock through there. I'm about five mil under nine o'clock maybe. All right, we'll go and get some oil. Okay, we have the 85W140 from LSA. 
API GL4, so my pump's a bit buggered, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I can't tell you how much they hold exactly. There will be a measurement. If you hop onto the LSA website and give it a hop onto the lube guide and put your model tractor in it, we'll tell you exactly. I need to fill this front diff up too. I'm going to do the other side hub yet, but there's no use filming that. There's no No different to this side, really. Now, sometimes um, it pays. I'll just put the old drain tin under there to catch it instead of the pot with the good nuts and bolts in it. Now, sometimes it pays to just let this sit for a little bit and make sure that the oil's fed right into the back bearings there. So you might think it's full now, just let it sit and give it a couple of minutes and you'll see the oil level come up and you'll just see it drop back down. And because it's a thick oil, it takes a little while to run back into the bearings. So, what well, does help it sometimes, we just put the bung in, just finger tight. Now, normally when you drain it, you probably wouldn't get all the oil out. So, and I can feel I'm turning in the diff there. There we go, so we actually we have to come up a little bit more. About there looks nice. And yeah, the oil's the oil's disappeared. So it's it's by turning it we've just coated some of the inside with oil. You don't normally have to do that, it's only after a major repair. I'll just get the Allen key. Top him up. And there we go. So the oil levels to the bottom of the thread there. I think we're doing pretty well. It probably will go into the bearings a little bit more. But yeah, my message before was don't overfill it, don't have it up here and, and think you're doing better, you're, you're not. There's a 12 millimeter, yep, 12 millimeter. Job done. Okay, that's it. I'm not going to film putting the wheel on. We're swapping wheels from left to right. I will fill the diff up and after I've done the other side, but that should be a fin. That should be a fix. All done.